Pallav Acharya, CPA and Principal at CPA Global Tax and Accounting PLLC in Scottsdale, Arizona. Pallav's subject today will be how international sales can impact taxation and what to do about it. Good morning, Pallav. It is a general feeling amongst the exporters that United States does not offer any tax benefits to exporters. Is this true? Well, uh, it's absolutely not correct, but uh, I can tell you where it is coming from. You know, United States traditionally have uh, offered, tried to give a lot of uh, export benefits to the exporters over a period of about 30 years or so. But uh, uh, due to our agreement with uh, with the World Trade Organization, we, uh, it has not been uh, we have not been able to really give those export benefits to the exporters. And every time anything has been enacted, it it had to get it had to be repealed uh, later on. So I can see where this is all coming from. But if you can see uh, it, uh, how why it makes uh, a lot of sense to give uh, the tax benefits to exporters, uh, we should just look at the the tax systems, you know, which is prevalent in around the world today. There are basically two kinds of tax systems. One is uh, we call it a territorial based uh, tax system, and the other one we call it a worldwide tax, uh, uh, tax worldwide based tax system. So, in the territorial based uh, tax system, the exporters or any uh, or the any countries, you know, they would tax their residents and citizens based on the income generated within the borders of their country. However, in the worldwide income uh, uh, taxation system, uh, uh, the residents and citizens are are basically uh, taxed on uh, the worldwide income basis. So United States follows the worldwide income uh, taxation system. And so that's the reason why when they try to compete with uh, the exporters of other countries, they are unable to do so. So Congress realized that in 1971 and, uh, you know, I tried to offer uh, something called a DISC which is uh, uh, Domestic International Sales Corporation um, uh, tax uh, uh, benefit to the exporters, and said that, okay, you know, you can allocate certain income to this, uh, this entity, this corporation, and we will not tax you uh, the income, uh, which is generated by this uh, Domestic International Sales Corporation. However, this uh, domestic uh, international sales corporation was uh, kind of a paper uh, system. So, uh, Everything was happening on the paper, and nothing really was happening by in, within that uh, corporation. So, World Trade Organization partner objected to this and said that this is an illegal subsidy to the exporters in the United States. So, eventually, the Congress had to repeal those provisions, and uh, and uh, and you know there was no tax benefit for a while. Now, in some, sometimes in the early 1980s, 1984 to be precise, Congress uh, wanted again to stimulate the exports. So they came back and said that, okay, we are going to give you another tax benefit and let's make it another effort to give them the benefit. And there was a provision called Foreign Sales Corporation was enacted at that time. Now, Foreign Sales Corporation was not much different from a Domestic International Sales Corporation. Only thing that was required that uh, this new new entity needs to be registered in a foreign country instead of a U.S. country. I mean, instead of the United States. So basically, uh, everything remained the same. The headquarters remained outside the U.S., but all the activities continued to happen within the U.S. So there was so again, you know, th this did not fly, and uh, uh, the WTO countries, you know, they objected to that, and we had to repeal those. Uh, uh, ben, uh, those provisions as well. Now, we did not just give up. In, in the year 2000, there was another set of provisions that was introduced to just to boost the exports, which was called extraterritorial income exclusion provisions. And uh, uh, they said that, okay, whatever income is generated by export, we are going to let you exclude them. Now, again, this was also objected to, and uh, it, was, it, it was repealed later on. However, out of all these things, all these new developments, uh, in 1971, there was a simultaneous tax provision which was called Interest Charged Domestic International Sales Corporation Provisions, which, which was not challenged 
by WTO or anybody else because they thought that it is just giving the free interest-free loan to the exporters and it is just a tax deferral uh, uh, regime. It is nothing to do with the tax export tax benefits. So that was not challenged and that remained in force. So, but you know, so I call that as a hidden treasure, you know, amongst all the export tax uh, provisions uh, because everything else is gone, but IC disc or interest charged uh, domestic international sales corporation still remains. Well, that is good news then. That sure is a good news. So is so how can um, an exporter claim for this kind of treasure that you just mentioned? Yes, you have to, well, the court says that, you know, you need to uh, incorporate an entity, a separate entity uh, from the actual manufacturing or exporting entity currently. That, uh, that entity will export uh, uh, the products. Or, you know, they, that can also have an agreement with this manufacturing entity and uh, re receive a sales commission. And uh, that way, you know, generate and export sales and uh, they can claim the, uh, the benefits. Now, of course, there are limits to the whole thing and there are conditions to be met. But uh, this is in general, uh, gives you a uh, certain income to be taxed, uh, to be uh, taxed, uh, deferred uh, by the interest charged uh, uh, domestic international sales corporations. The, the important point that to be, uh, to be noted is that IC Desk, they do not pay any tax at the entity level. Only the shareholders of IC Desk, uh, they pay tax whenever they, uh, they, they take a distribution out of this IC Desk. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So is, are those the limitations then to claiming the benefits that... Yes, and you know, let me tell you so the how uh, what are the maximum tax benefits and what are the limits of, of for claiming the tax benefits. Okay, are. it's actually income from sale of property, export property is uh, maximum is four percent of qualified export sales, or fifty percent of the combined taxable income. Now, combined taxable income meaning uh, the uh, for the export entities uh, income as well as the manufacturing company's income, you combine that and you know combined taxable income defined in a certain way, and you are entitled to claim 50% of that or 4% of the uh, qualified export sales. So what are the do's and don'ts for maximizing these tax benefits? If you could give clients three pieces of advice in this regard, what would they be? Well. Uh, you have to first remember that there, is a, there are certain tests to qualify as IC disk. So corporation must pass both gross receipts test and export test, export asset test. 95% of the gross receipts of IC disk must const constitute qualified gross receipts. And 95% of the assets of the corporation must be qualified exports, export assets. But there are many ways to qualify as export assets include even the loans to producers, for example. So it is very important to remember all these uh, tests and you know, make sure that you, know, you are complying with the tax regulations. Uh, another th important thing that to, to remember is that, is, that, uh, is that export properties may have no more than 50% costs attributable to foreign com components. So basically, you know, in a way, if you look at it, there's 50% of the components you are allowed to import. So only the 50% uh, components needs to be produced within the United States. So which is a great uh, thing and it's a, it's a great way to, uh, to plan your exports, export sales. Well, the do's and don'ts, you know, uh, generally uh, IC Desk is a related party. You can incorporate it as a sister concern or uh, an affiliated corporation, but uh, the, the important golden rule to remember is do not sell to the related parties. And if you do have to sell to the related parties offshore, then use the, something called an arm's length standard. That is the sales price uh, which, is, uh, uh, the, which you would charge to a third party. Do not charge anything more or less than that. And you have to be very careful about that. And the second important thing to remember is uh, there are a lot of different ways in which IC disk planning can be done. And uh, I have seen many complex planning uh, being done by the corporations. But 
Oftentimes, this is being challenged by the Internal Revenue Service. So my advice would be start small and do not complicate. Stay simple and maximize the benefits, whatever is available. And, you know, that's, there is definitely something for everyone, but it needs to be assessed first and, uh, uh, and then claimed. Third thing is keep required records and stay, always stay in compliance. Because uh, uh, a few years back, IRS has been auditing many uh, ICDISC uh, entities. Uh, so just be careful about keeping all the required records and filing all the required tax returns. And again, you know, monitor your IC disk regularly because things may change as we have seen it that in the past that export regulations have been changing. So uh, keep an eye on those regulations and developments and make changes or you may need to even close down the IC disk at some point of time, but uh, monitor that uh, carefully. The process sounds quite intricate. So what is it that you can do to assist these exporters? Can you give us an example of how you can help them to comply with the tax regulations? Absolutely. Well, the first thing is, you know, you need to, you must take advantage of the provision while it is still in effect. That's absolutely important. And we, as a, in, at a CPA Global Tax and Accounting, we specialize in assisting the formation of the IC disk, well, of course, with an attorney's help. We do the preliminary assessment, so you do not have to commit anything be at the beginning. We will work out a plan for you. We will also recommend whether it is useful to you, it will benefit you, or maybe we may also rec recommend that you, know, you should not go into IC disk structure at this point. So we will do the first preliminary assessment and advise you. We recommend a strategy to maximize benefits. So if you qualify, we will, we will group certain products in certain way and use certain techniques. Uh, one of them is called marginal costing method and maximize your export tax benefits. Uh, and we specialize in that area. We do assist with accounting and tax records as I said before, the compliance is extremely important uh, in case of IRS audits. So we do assist in that area as well. We do prepare tax returns for the IC desk, which is also a complicated and very long tax return. But uh, and everything needs to be uh, everything needs to be uh, complied with, and uh, all the statements needs to be uh, prepared and attached to the return. So we do that for our clients. And uh, we are also available for any ongoing consultations. Thank you, Palab. This has been very informative. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners at this time? Well, ICDESC is a special provision in the code, and you need definitely need an experienced accountant to guide you through the process. We can certainly help maximize the benefits by grouping the products together, as I said before. And uh, if I can give you one example, Recently, we were able to optimize uh, the tax benefits for a client, for an exporter, that resulted in over a million dollars in tax benefits. So uh, I would strongly suggest that you should definitely explore uh, this provision and uh, try to take advantage of uh, this tax benefit, which is currently available. Thank you so much. This has been very, very informative. Thank you, Diana. Thanks.